big toe work. So there are three different parts to this big toe work. And it's a little bit um, fussy, a little bit odd. So I ask you to bear with me. So we're gonna try to start to untwist and strengthen the muscles on uh, either side of the toe itself, the big toe itself. So you're simply gonna go hook your first two feet, fingers on the inside of the big toe and keeping the other toes in a plane. So you don't want the toes to splay and curl and lift and come off of the plane, come out of the same plane as the other, as the big toe. You're gonna take those two fingers and you're simply going to, I don't know which way I can show you the easiest. You're simply going to pull the toe away from the others. Now, you don't want to just pull the whole foot. We are really just working for the towards the big toe. And I think up in the air is a little bit um, more difficult for me. So I'm anchoring my heel on the floor. So we're gently mobilizing the toe. Again, working into the base of the toe as much as you can, okay? And you're gonna do eight toe, big toe pulls. Same on the other side. Go eight. Ooh, I like this. I put I put the whole side of my foot down. Eight, seven, six, five, four. I can sit up. Three, two, and one. And then we're going to set the feet um, next to each other with about an an inch, no more, maybe a half inch between the soles. Of the and again, keeping the toes, all of the toes, as much as possible in a plane with each other. That same action that you just did when you were using your fingers to pull the toe, big toe inward, you're gonna do that and you're gonna try to pull without pulling the rest of the foot, pull the big toes so they start to touch each other. Now let's say you have a lot of strength and a lot of mobility that way, then okay, walk the feet a little further away. Um, but I think that an inch range of motion is pretty reasonable to start with, okay? All right, and you're gonna do eight of those, so I'm gonna do four more. I'm not sure if you can see my toes coming together here. Three, and you can see these toes wanna help, so gradually as we get better and better, we're gonna ask those to toes to stay in a plane. Last one, okay? And now the oxy, uh, the uh, contra, Converse of that, instead of bringing the big toes together, you have some toes are touching probably, some toes are not touching when your foot is in neutral in a plane. And we're going to try to bring all the toes together. Now, this is the one that I find difficult. So, if you're like me and you have one foot where the toes are just bobbling around, then you might want to do work one foot at a time. And all you're going to do is Squeeze the toes towards each other without curling. You don't want the sensation of the toes curling down into the earth. And for example, for, or flattening, pressing, so that the knuckles flip back at the end of the toes. So after our eighth one, so this one's really hard for me, narrowing the gaps and releasing. I'm gonna do four more. And again, this could be done in standing. It might be most easily done sitting on a chair so you can look down at your feet and let your shins be just hanging down from a straight plane, 90 degree angle. And uh, one more time, come on right foot. Good, I can tell this one's gonna get better for sure. Um, so we've got that, the big toe stretches with the fingers, the big toes on their own reaching towards each other, and then the toes squeezing together, eight of those, each variation. <laughs> your two first fingers, and you're gonna thread them between your big toe and its neighbor. And then you're going to gently draw towards center line. Not, off, you don't wanna lift it above or below the other toes. You wanna to come straight out to the side. And when I say gentle, I really mean gentle. So you're gently pulling it open, and probably we're gonna go an eighth of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch, but I'm just gently suggesting to, it's, it's a massage, type. think of it as Thai massage for your toe. So you're just moving it out and then releasing, move it out, release. Now when you move it, don't do this. 
Don't move the whole foot. <coughs> you can hold the foot stationary and just gently pull the toe. Again, no more than a half an inch. I, I think we don't want to yank on those muscles, okay? We're just saying you can go this direction. It's a wake-up call. Does that make sense? Okay? And don't pull the other toes out of alignment either. So try not to have like a crazy toe position and go, all right. You know, everything, ooh, it gave me some a cramp. Uh, just in line there, and again, let's do eight on each foot. Ooh, I think I got it in the, okay, so holding the foot and just working that toe. And again, towards the base of the toe if you can. And just waking it up. So this is very, like, out there. This <laughs> is bigger. Okay, so now we've said hello to the big toe muscles in that direction. Um, I played around with this. I think standing might be a better way to experiment with this. And I'm going to say come off the sticky up. Stand on the floor. Okay, here I am standing about an inch apart. And I'm going to work to bring my big toes together for eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, come on toes, one more, okay? And I'm gonna work, this is the harder one, harder one to see, but you can see my toes are separated. And I'm gonna work to bring my toes together like this. Okay, and here I go. Uh, eight, come on right foot, seven, Oh, have already done this this morning and I'm finding it harder. That's six and make sure you relax. And five and four and three and squeeze the toes and one and release. Okay, and just to show you, let me come a little closer. See that good? Um, my right foot is having has a harder time. So there's me squeezing my right toes, curling. I'm gonna try to really hold them steady. There, that's pretty good. Better, but you can see how hard it is to draw them together. And then I'm gonna do my left foot individually, and I'll bring the toes. And you can see. It's a little easier for me to control on this side. The toes releasing, the toes coming together. Not sure my little toe is doing anything. There we go, bring the little toe to the picture. And so, as you see, it's very um, uh, interesting to try to control the toes in that direction. And we just start where we're at and I think through the coming months, it'll get better and better. Okay, inner thigh lifts. So we're gonna do inner thigh lifts again this month, but we're only going to do the variation where the pelvis is stacked, the waist is engaged, the abs are engaged, and you're gonna bring the leg up at hip height. Top hand can help, or if you wanna challenge the balance, you can, but don't let this hip rock back. This is a big no-no. And likewise, do not let the belly relax. You should have a continuous and thorough contraction, not overly gripped, just thorough contraction. Bottom leg is gonna lift up and touch. This should touch. I know some of us are bow-legged and that's fine. Whatever part can touch, squeezes together and then you touch the floor. The inhale takes you up, the exhale takes you down. You can take this leg up as high as you can so long as the bottom leg meets and you don't rock the hip back. So we're going to do 16. So that's four, five, six. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And side two. Again, engage the waist, hold the belly, make sure your pelvis is stacked. Your feet can be slightly forward of the pelvis, 
but don't round your back to achieve that. Make sure your spine is reaching long, or if you want a challenge, you can have your legs directly underneath you. Top leg up, hip height nominally, higher if you can thoroughly and easily touch the legs together. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, breathe in, and, and four, three, two, and one, and release. That's all for the inner thigh lift. So 16 each leg now. And I'm going to stop the video for a moment so I can reposition for the um, standing roll ball down with the ball squeezes. Um, that has changed a little bit. We are adding on to our wall roll down. So you'll want to, if you can't remember, watch the video to um, remind yourself. you to be very careful um, about locking the knees. If that means that you have to step a little further away from the wall to keep the softness in the knees, that is preferable to trying to balance with the feet closer to the wall. Um, if your tush is coming away from the wall, then you're not doing this, the exercise that I'm asking for, looking for in the study. Keep your tush against the wall um, and adjust the feet as necessary. If you're feeling like the knees are flipped back into the back of the joint, then either take that softness, a little softness in the knee, intentionally, or walk the feet away, or you may be one of the people that really does need to bend the knees. If you can avoid fully bending the knees, that is good, um, but use it as a tool if you need. And then, so we've got, be careful of the knees, be aware of the knees, keep the tush against the wall as you're rolling down and up. As you, since you have the ball, both on the path downward and the path upward, I want you to take an inner thigh squeeze. Now you don't have to try to burst the ball with your inner thighs, but keep a firm and consistent pressure on the ball, both on the way down and on the way up so that the thighs are rocking and rolling in the pelvis. And you can watch that since you're going down there, okay? Still articulating the spine, still short hands, arms traveling with the shoulders, coming back up to shoulder height, still the back of the shoulders and the back of the head against the wall, still your neutral natural curves of the neck and the low back. Then the last thing that we're gonna do is the arch lift that we did last month has become part of this exercise. So the toes flat and spread, not curling, not gripping. The rest of the arch lifting up, um, both on the way down and the way up if you can. If it's hard to do on the way down, then em emphasize the way up, okay? And that is gonna be, the, we'll have to work with not tilting the arch, dropping the arch inward, dropping to the outside edge of the foot, which we have been doing, but actively taking the arch lift at the same time we're doing the standing roll downs. And I'm going to say either do the four to five that we've been working on, or you could start to work your way up to eight wall roll downs. And I would start gradually, even if you can go all the way down on the first one, take a couple where you're just going halfway down to really warm up the back and find the articulation through the spine. Of course, we are still trying to articulate. Really use the navel region to help guide the spine downward, that folding over the volleyball feeling, and guide the spine back up to the wall. Great, so that is it, and I thank you.